The Bowers & Wilkins 700 S2 range of speakers was first released back in 2017. One of the first products I reviewed for Pursuit of Perfect System was the 705 S2 speakers about three years ago. And because the time difference is so great, obviously I can't compare the new 705 signatures to the 705 S2. But I actually don't think that's that big a deal because the price difference is so big between them. What's really important is, are the 705 signatures worth the £2,699 price tag. I have unboxed my fair share of high-end hi-fi speakers, and some of them have cost up to about 10 times what these Bowers & Wilkins do, and normally I just get on with it, but taking these out of the box, I very quickly stopped in my tracks and went away and got some rubber gloves because I was really paranoid and worried about marking this really lovely, high quality, very high gloss finish. The finish is what Bowers and Wilkins call Datuk Gloss Ebony. And because it's wood, that means every pair of speakers that you buy will be different to each other. But I think being different won't necessarily make it everybody's cup of tea. And the finish, this look, and the way the speakers are presented or finished, nine different coats of finish, is really, really important for this signature version because a big chunk of the money or the premium that you're paying for the signatures is on or for this finish. The rest of the outside of the speaker is very familiar. The 165 millimeter continuum mid base driver, the one inch carbon dome, tweeter which sits on top of the speaker inside a solid aluminium housing for various technical benefit reasons. I'm sure most of you are already familiar with the drivers and the driver technologies in the 705 signature speakers. Obviously the tweeter on top, I'm sure everybody's familiar with that. And the continuum drivers, we are now seeing them in the entry level 600 range, the 700 range, and obviously it started with the Bowers and Wilkins 800, the flagship range of speakers. So again, we are very, very familiar with them. And I've always really liked the Bowers and Wilkins speakers that I've listened to that have used and featured continuum based drivers. The other non-cosmetic difference with this signature series of speakers is with the crossover, which now uses bypass capacitors from Mungdorf. Now, setup of the 705 signatures was really easy, actually, to a point anyway, and I placed them on the brand new Atacama Nexus speaker stands, Nexus XX, in the usual spot in my main listening room, fully expecting to have to spend quite a bit of time you know, working on towing, working on the speaker's placement in terms of time alignment to get everything to snap nicely in focus. But I literally placed them down, press play, and to my amazement, they sounded really very good straight away. Maybe I just got lucky with that one, or maybe I just happened to have the perfect amplifier for them. We'll talk about that in a second. But obviously I spent some time really dialing in and fine tuning the speaker's placement. And then I measured them as part of a full custom Dirac Live calibration. What's interesting here is the, what I'm calling the usual Bowers and Wilkins treble lift that I've seen in quite a lot of their newer speakers. You can see a reasonable upper mid range dip or recession and then a fairly lean base. And naturally, I did a custom direct live calibration to try and remove the negative effects of my room and really try and maximize the sound quality of the speakers. And I used the data from the Bowers & Wilkins 606 speakers review that I did a couple of months ago, just as a starting point, just out of pure curiosity and interest. I wanted to see how similar or different the speakers measured in my room. And there was quite a lot of similarities between the 606 and the new 705 signatures, which was interesting to me because it just meant that I could see and measure some definite Bowers house sound. And I get asked the question a lot, you know, are the 705s worth the extra? Are they worth the premium over the 606? So I think I'd like to answer that question now. And I would say, if you have a system and a setup that is good enough to justify the 705s, then yes, they are a better speaker. 
And I can appreciate that comment can sound a little condescending. I really don't mean it to come across that way. I'm just really trying to be brutally honest. And here is why. I reviewed the 705 signature speakers using two very good, very different sounding amplifiers. I used the Lima Tucana 2 Anniversary integrated amplifier, which is a 5,000 pound integrated amplifier. And I also used the Griffin Diablo 120, which is a nine and a half thousand pound integrated amplifier. And I'm sure a lot of people will say, you know, using a five and definitely a nine and a half thousand pound amplifier on 2,700 pounds minus a penny speakers is crazy, it's overkill. And in some ways I would agree with you, but in other ways, after listening to it, you could say that the Griffin is probably the perfect amplifier for these speakers. The Griffin Diablo 120 has a really big and really ballsy, really full sound. And its bass possibly has a little bit of fat on it, which makes it, again, full and big and really quite rounded and boppy sounding, but with lots of it, lots of real authority. When you combine that with the slightly leaner sounding Speakers, the 705 signatures, well then you don't get speakers that sound leaner in the bass. You get speakers that sound very full in the bass, very rounded, very bouncy, very, again, voluptuous, and really quite impressive in terms of scale and authority of bass for a speaker at this price and for a speaker of this size. Maybe not quite as big in bass as the Martin Oscar Duo speakers that I reviewed recently, but those cost 5,000 pounds, so nearly double. Interestingly, switching to the Lima amplifier, and yeah, the bass is probably a little bit faster sounding, a bit more nimble, a bit more, you know, start, stop quicker, and a bit more kind of upbeat sounding, but there's definitely something missing. There's that solidity, there's that warmth missing, which I think is really important because of how that warmth and fullness balances the rest of the sound from the speakers. To test things a little bit more, I added a subwoofer to the system and used it with the Lima amplifier. And yes, this was a better overwhelm result because it gave me a better starting point, a better bass starting point, both measured and audible. And interestingly, I used a brand new subwoofer that I can't tell you much about, but I'm just gonna say here that I think it's going to make a lot of audio files very happy for what it can deliver against what it costs. Coming back to the Bowers 705 signatures, they have a really interesting in a way, contradiction between the mid-range delivery and the treble delivery, because yeah, the treble is lively. We can see that from the measurements. The mid-range is delivered a bit smoother and a bit more set back, but the treble is lively. And in a way, that is a contradiction, but one that can work really well. Now, I have seen some audio files say they find the latest bait of Bowles and Wilkins speakers to sound a little bright, and that could well be their room acoustics, or it could well be the amplifier that they're using, because with the Griffin Diablo 120, which is a warmer sounding amplifier, a more musical amplifier, it has a bit of a darker treble delivery that is delivered with you know, smooth immediacy. So yeah, present treble, always present there, but never too much. And that lively treble is really important, I think, for these speakers, because that's what helps to make them sound snappy, it's what helps to make them sound fast. But with the Lima amplifier, things were a little bit different because it has a, a kind of more neutral sound signature. It's naturally a little bit leaner sounding. The bass wasn't quite there to warm the whole sound up. And I did find maybe the treble to be a little bit too present. The vocals delivery from the 705 signatures, in a way, is quite similar to the treble. With the Diablo 120 amplifier, the vocals and mid-range was lush and warm, really solid, quite easy going very musically engaging to listen to. Switching to the Lima amplifier, then yeah, I think the vocals sound crisper. They sound more carved out in stone, but they are also a bit more lively and a bit more upfront and a bit more attacking, which can be great for certain types of music where the vocals are attacking and that really works for that style of music. But maybe with other styles of music, it could be a little bit more attacking than maybe is intended. So hopefully you're getting from this that these 705 signature speakers can really sound quite different, even when they're being driven from two very good amplifiers, but amplifiers that sound 
really quite different. But there are some sonic characteristics that carried across both of these amplifiers. Firstly, soundstage clarity is really very good. Maybe leading edges are a little bit softer than some other speakers, which maybe is a technical limitation of the speaker, or maybe it's a designed in aspect of these speakers to make them sound a little bit more refined. The sound delivery fundamentals, such as, you know, very good timing, obviously good transparency. Hopefully you've kind of got that from this already. And I think the treble, the way the treble's designed and the lively treble means that these speakers do create you know, quite a tall overall sound stage. And treble details can really pop out to you at times, which is really quite impressive. And there's just a nice amount of ambience being created all the time, again, because there's quite a lot of treble information there. So overall, the 705 signatures are a very nice speaker system and a very good sounding speaker system that, you know, is difficult to fault. Yes, there are faults and you can, you know, if you want to find flaws in the performance, but they are very good all round speakers, maybe based depending, depending on what amplifier you are using. And I hopefully you've got from this review so far that these are very transparent speakers. So depending on what system you feed into them, and the amplifier you use, they're going to give you very much that sound back. And I want to stress that, of course, you don't need to use a nine and a half thousand pound amplifier with these to make them sound good. I kind of used, hopefully, the comparison of this review to try and emphasize a couple of things to hopefully help you make the right decision for pairing these speakers with the right amplifier and the right products. Because I think if you use the 705 signatures on their own without a subwoofer, then it would be a great place to start, you know, you search for an amplifier with one that is warmer, the one that is more lush in the mid range. It does have a quite a full sound for the bass, maybe a darker treble, maybe a darker treble. I found that to work really well. But if you're going to use the 705 signatures with a subwoofer or subwoofers, then I think that probably opens up the choice of amplifiers more than would make getting the perfect balance right just that little bit easier providing you know you can set up subwoofers good to support these and you will want fast subwoofers because these are really quite nimble and fast overall speakers coming back to the all important question are the Bowers and Wilkins 705 signatures worth the £2,699 asking price? Well, I think for comparison purposes, for speakers that I have reviewed, and the closest I think being the Monitor Audio PL100 Mark II, the Platinum 100 Mark IIs, which cost about £400 more. So for £400 more, you are getting Monitor Audio's flagship range of speakers. Both of the speakers have really nice, you know, high gloss wood finishes. Without having both speakers here, obviously I can't directly compare them, but I can say that they have really quite different sonic signatures. The Monitor Audio is definitely a bassier, a warmer overall sounding speaker. Obviously Bowers sound like Bowers, faster, more nimble, a little bit more lively sounding. They really are quite different, and I think different enough to attract different audio files to them, obviously with different preferences and tastes. And yeah, I think the Bowers & Wilkins 705s will hold up to the Monitor Audio Platinums, even though they're more expensive and they're from the flagship range of Monitor Audios, providing you put the right system before them. So take from that what you will. I think the biggest competition for the 705 signature speakers comes from within Bowers & Wilkins because you can buy the 703 floor standing speakers for less money and if you wanted to use these signature speakers as part of a home cinema system, there is no center speaker that's finished in this Datuk high gloss ebony finish. So I think that makes the 705 signature speakers really quite a niche product. Maybe it's intended to be that from Bowers and Wilkins. So whether it's worth you know, the premium, I think it's gonna boil down to how much you love the look, how much you really love the look of these speakers. Because if you really love the look, then yeah, you're getting the best looking 705 speakers that's currently available. And obviously you are getting the best sounding ones as well because of the crossover upgrades. And I think you know, the distinctive look, it's probably enough to make a decision for you as an audiophile if you want these speakers or maybe not. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you found this review useful and helpful. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button and obviously subscribe to the Pursuit of Perfect System YouTube channel if you haven't already. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.